Hello everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today we're going to continue plumbing our one bedroom apartment in Revit. So we're going to focus on drainage. Uh, this is going to be part one. Part one is going to focus on this double bowl sink here by the kitchen. And then on part two, we're going to focus on the washer and the bathroom group. Because there are a bunch of ways that we can pipe that and I want to start a conversation there. So for now, we're going to focus on the sink. We're going to provide a couple of stacks here, a waste stack and a vent stack. So we're going to start piping some drainage and we're going to do some venting and I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks along the way. See you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it. It makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. All right, let's pipe some sanitary drainage. Um, there's not a specific correct way of doing this. Uh, there's a thousand ways of skinning a cat. So I'm just going to show you a couple of approaches or workflows that I like and you judge uh, for yourself. First thing I do is I don't like this uh, single line display, you know, the, the medium or coarse. I like to keep it in fine. Uh, I also want to go to my visibility graphics overrides with VG and I want to keep my background half tone so when I hit apply I'm going to take it to the other side so you see what happens you know it takes a little bit of relevance away from the architectural background and I also like to keep this underlay on so that I can see some stuff underneath. Another thing I like to do is I like to keep my my graphic display options as wireframe because it allows me to see my connectors underneath and I can align a little better. Uh, so let's start. Um, I want to start on this side with the sink and I'm going to start first. It's always a good idea to tile your windows so you see what's happening on, on 3D view. And many times, you know, I just turn off the architectural background from here. So I just use it as a monitor for my 3D piping. You know, so right now, the only thing I have is my plumbing fixtures on my piping, right? So I, I tend to work a lot from 3D view. I really like it. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to start from the plan view. You see how as, as soon as I click on my plumbing fixture, I have all the available connectors highlighted, right? So in this case, I already have a hot water and cold water connected, but I have my two drains available. So if I were to uh, click here, I already know that this is my connector. Sometimes you say connect into fixture and it will ask you which one of the connectors you want to connect into because you have two available. But in this case, since I already click here and I click on this one, I know that it's going to come out of that one, right? So I'm going to click here. I want to make sure that I'm, see right now my pipe type is set up uh, to supply. I want to change this to some kind of waste pipe type, either PVC, cast iron, or in this case, I have this generic one. Uh, and now I want to make sure that I drop the elevation a little bit. Right now the connector is at 2.2. Two. So I'm going to drop it down to, let's say, 1.4. Just to give it something, right? And then I'm going to go into my wall and see how on my right and on the right side of my screen, I have a live monitoring of what's going on. One thing I wanted to show you is that if you start a piping, uh, sanitary drainage is a little bit tricky is by far the trickiest thing to draft in Revit MEP. Uh, so right now I'm not sloping the pipe. That's on purpose because I have my wall really close. So I don't have to really worry about how much the pipe is dropping because it's not a long run. Uh, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that in my case, I like to draw the P-traps out of elbows. And I do that by simply selecting here and clicking on my p-trap and the reason i'm able to do that is because i have my p-trap set up as an elbow i show this in another video but if you want to see what this is all about is i'm doing edit family here 
and then my p-trap if you go here under family categories and parameters it comes out of the box as a multi-port and if you leave it as multi-port you won't be able to switch it the way i am but um, you know i prefer to keep it as an elbow and that way i can switch it at will just like i did with this one okay um, anyway so we have our p-trap now and i'm going to do the same thing for the other one so I dropped, I believe it was to I one four, I think. And and sometimes I like to exaggerate a little bit, just so that I don't run into trouble, and then I adjust uh, as needed. So I'm gonna select my elbow again, and I'm gonna change it into a P trap. And now I wanna connect them both with a double sanitary T uh, on a vertical. In order to do that. I'm gonna turn with an elbow here and I'm gonna drop, let's say like around here to zero feet. And I'm gonna hit apply. And that's introducing my, my drop right here. And then, you know, if you wanna orbit and you, and you don't click on anything, the orbiting can be a little bit anarchic. But if you click on something and then you start orbiting, you're centering your orbit around the object, the object that you selected. So that can be a helpful tip. So I'm gonna delete this elbow and I'm going to extend this a little bit upwards. And another tip is that if you're going to extend this upwards, sometimes it can get out a little bit out of walk. If, in order to avoid that, if you click the shift button, then you are limiting your stretching to a vertical, a perfectly vertical stretch, okay? And another trick is that you can use the trim extend command. I have the shortcut set up as TE, and then you click on the pipe that you want to extend to, and then you click on the pipe that you want to extend, and that introduced this uh, sanitary T. And this sanitary T came up here because of my routing preferences. Okay, so if you go here to um, edit type, and if you don't know much about routing preferences or pipe types, uh, make sure you check the other video on sanitary drain pipe types. So now I'm going to upgrade this fitting to a double sanitary T. And then from my floor plan, I can draw a pipe. Notice that I'm not sloping here, but I don't want to make my life miserable unnecessarily. I'm right here. There's no need to slope this here. Okay, so now I can do trim TR and I take this guy and this guy and I will trim it. And I want to make sure that this pipe here is a sanitary vent. But unfortunately, I cannot simply click on this pipe and change from sanitary drain to sanitary vent. See how it's not available? The reason why that's not available is because the only things that are going to display here are going to be the things that are based off of a system classification of sanitary. And my vent system is not based off of sanitary, it's based off of vent. So the trick that I use for that is typically I go to a section, you know, just like this one. And then from here, I simply copy this pipe up. And since this one's not connected, to the sanitary drain system, I can easily change to sanitary vent right here. And then I can connect back to my double sanitary T. Now, if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com. At beamitup.com, we offer professional training on mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection systems. And we can also train you, obviously, in Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. So go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com or contact us directly at the email you see on the screen and let us know how we can help you get professionally developed. Okay, so that's my stack. And, you know, you can create one stack and copy it a thousand times and you don't have to do this ever again. So now we need to define a vent height. So in most cases, I would like to connect that vent in the ceiling space to something else that is venting to a riser, let's say like around here. But in this case, um, I don't know if you remember, 
let me turn on my architectural background so I, I can remind you what's going on there. See, this is open and then there's this little piece of wall. So what's happening is that this vent line is running underneath that counter and then it's connecting to a vent riser. And then the floor below has a similar apartment. They're all stacked, right? So the, well, this is the first floor, so there's no apartment below, but the, the apartment above has the same configuration. So both the drain and the vent are connected to a drain riser and a vent riser. So that's what we're gonna do here. And in this case, this run is a little bit longer. So I will uh, slope down since it's a small pipe, I need to slope down at a quarter of an inch per foot. So something like that. I'm gonna take my vent and I'm gonna offset it to the back a little bit. I'm gonna turn off the slope for venting. Uh, ideally, you would want to, to slope your vent pipes as well, but you know, it's just for simplicity. And, it's, um, and again, I'm exaggerating this. And just for the sake of uh, displaying it easier for the reviewer, I'm offsetting it like that. In reality, both lines would be, you know, probably one on top of the other or slightly offset, but I want to keep them uh, away from each other. You know what, I'm going to do a 45 here. So that's uh, kind of like in the middle of the road. So you can take this guy here. Let me take this little piece off and then you can take this guy just to rotate. The center of rotation has to be right here. And then I can do 45 degrees this way. And then that way, you know, we're able to display a little better and we don't get out of the wall. So I can do TR for trim and I trim these two guys and now I can bring my pipe within the wall. Okay, uh, and then this vent is going to extend all the way to the vent riser. So let's make this zero feet and hit apply. And again, I'm gonna delete my elbow here. And then this, see, like I can click here and then click here and again do the, the shift command, but I can also click on the riser and then here where it says this elevation, I can set it up to 10 feet and just hit enter and then that's my riser. My riser is most likely going to be bigger than one and a half. So let's make it two and a half inches for the vent and let's uh, make it it's actually under this lab already. So let's bring it a little bit higher. Notice that you don't have that uh, elevation option that you had here in the option bar because this is sloping. But what you can do is click here on this offset and then instead of minus something, I can make it like six inches. Okay. Uh, and now we are going to drop. Let me drop underground, let's say minus two feet. And let's say it's, it's going that way, just to have it somewhere. We can reorient later. Uh, now I'm going to delete this again, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to change that elevation to 10 feet. And now I'm going to change the size of this line. I want to do the whole thing three inches, so I'll do tab select, and then I change this to three inches. And I do trim extent to this one and it introduces my sanitary T here. And I'm, I'm going to need a clean out at the base of the stack. So we can probably do this right now. Let me go to a section and then open it up. So here's the connection that goes to the sink. So I can click here and go to my section and notch it up a little bit just to create some space. And this turns 
that are from vertical to horizontal, they have to be long sweep. They cannot be short elbows. So you have to change them to long sweep. And in this case, I didn't have enough space. So I have to uh, back up a little bit. Got a little bit too greedy with the space. Now I click on it and I should be able to change it. Now it did fit. So I offset it this way. And let's see, it's really, really tight to to have my my clean out here okay and obviously you need to coordinate the location of that clean out you know the real building on level one you don't have this apartment you have some open area or something like that and then you would have your clean out at the base of the stack accessible in this case unfortunately it's going to be inside of the apartment of some poor guy whenever you know some maintenance problems occur they're going to come here. So back to our section. What I can do is I can do uh, create similar and have, let's say, a two inch pipe coming out like this. And then I click here, delete this piece of pipe, and just cap open it. And that's my clean out right there. Okay. Let's check in my section to make sure that the cleanout is accessible. It is not. See, it is too low. So I would have to bring this up. This is really challenging here. So I'm going to take this pipe up a little bit more. Instead of 1.4, I'm going to make it 1.6. And then I'm going to bring this up as much as I can. And then I take my clean out. Right here. Now we can take our vent and do trim extent and connect our vent to our riser. And notice that it's introducing the vent fitting for PVC right here. But you could also use a, a sanitary T for venting. It's just, you know, cheaper. Anyway, so we have our sink already connected. Now, well, this vent riser should terminate here. You don't really need, you don't really need this, right? Like you can do cap open ends or even have this turn upwards and have a reducer or an increaser to three inches. But I'm gonna keep it like this because I wanna use this as a model for the other units that are gonna be stacked on top of this one. And make sure you stay tuned for part two because we're going to be piping our washer and our bathroom group. We're going to do it a couple of different ways, so keep an eye on it. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.